first off, I just want to say thank you. I've known about you. The earliest memory I can really remember is uh, being 10 years old and driving in the car with my mom, and I was actually talking to a couple I just met. And I'd always refer to my mom's friend as that hippie friend. <laughs> and my mom and my best friend at the time, which was uh, her son, we heard your voice come on in the car. It was like a racket to our ears. We couldn't <laughs> seem to understand the clout that it brought. And it was consistently on from as long as I can remember in my mom's house. <laughs> so, but I mean, when you're a kid, you never really think about these things. You don't understand. Well, you haven't lived enough discord to understand the value. You haven't been enough out of alignment to understand the value of getting back into alignment. <laughs> exactly. And it wasn't until about 10 years later when I was 19, about three years ago, that I came home from a brief visit from college. And, you know, college started to expand my ideals and really kind of going really headstrong towards what I really wanted. And I wasn't actively listening, but of course, you know, when I came in, you were on, on the CD. And even though I wasn't actively listening, something, I don't remember what was said exactly, but it just clicked from that moment moving forward. I just started listening to it actively from not even really listening to it at all. Because at the time in college, I, I was put into a class with, I just in general, you know, when you're a freshman walking in in a very large university, everybody has the same mindset of just, unfortunately, you know, going crazy and, you know, doing what's, I guess what you see on TV or something of what's expected. And the things I wanted were just so much greater. And I just, I wanted, I viscerally knew I wanted great things. And the people I was around were very against that in a way. From what you said earlier, the perception of what they thought was viable in their life wasn't exactly viable in anybody else's if you wanted something that was so great and so good. That's because there is a shortage consciousness that is a bit rampant in humanity mm -hmm. that goes something like, if you reach for greatness and find it, then you will deprive others of some greatness. And so you should be willing to settle for less in order to spread it around more equitably. That's sort of the thing that makes someone not want you to reach for all that you want. But then again, doesn't matter how many chairs they see in the room, does it? No. And the wonderful part to that is, I mean, even though I was still kind of getting into it and understanding these things, the development, you know, at the time, all I could think about was, because I was around all these, unfortunately I have to use this word, horny teenagers. <laughs> I wanted something so much deeper than that. I wanted something that, you know, I could relate to. And We're just going to say something to you softly and easily here. Don't use what's in your past as such a important point in why you're where you're at. We haven't said this before, but it's been brewing, and so this is a really good opportunity to talk about this. You know how you're in a situation, in general or in specific, where you want something. And it isn't a popular thing to desire, let's say. And so... You make excuses about why you're not going to do that rather than just boldly saying, I want to do this. And when you say, it's my intention to do such and such, there's clarity in that. This is going to feel a little off the subject, but it isn't. It's like someone asking you to do something that you don't really want to do. Maybe it's go visit them. Maybe it's spend an evening with them. And it really doesn't feel like a match to you. And so... There's a very common thing where you say, well, I'd like to, but I can't because. And then you begin explaining these reasons, sort of making stuff up, maybe some of it's real and making stuff up, why you can't go, rather than just advocating for what you do want. And so that's what you're doing here as you're explaining to us what you were surrounded with and how it held you back and how it hindered you in this way or that way, what it really did was help you get clear about who you are and what you want. And now you're in a place where you can just begin 
advocating for what you want. You see, you don't have to advocate for what you want in order to set it into motion because that contrast that you lived already set it into motion. But every time you advocate for it, you match it. So you let the universe yield to you ideas and impulses and experiences. But every minute you spend explaining why you aren't doing it, you're not in vibrational alignment with what the vortex is wanting and trying to yield to you. Can you feel that? Sure. Yeah. So what we would like to hear from you from this point forward is about the irrelevance of anyone else and what they're doing. And that's what I wanted to lead into it. It was really only until very recently that it just, it feels so good not to care about what other people think. Well, here's the thing. It isn't that you don't care because you do care sure. and you're putting the best parts of what you're synthesizing into your vortex. So you're not uncaring and you're not not benefiting by your relationship and exposure to them. You're gleaning everything that you want. But in this now clear advocation about what you want rather than explaining what you're not doing, just talking about what you are doing, now it clears up, it'll trim years off of the manifestation time of the things that are important to you. Sure. One of the things that's most interesting is to see any of you go from your smaller world of influence into a greater world of influence. Because in the greater world of influence, like going to school, in that greater world of influence, you are catapulting rockets of desire many times more powerfully, and therefore summoning much more source, and therefore much more aware of your emotions because the energy is moving faster and you haven't found your balance yet. But as soon as you find your balance, and the main component in finding your balance is by not caring so much about anybody else's response to what you want, to what you think, to what you believe, and to what you do, then off you go. And as the universe yields to you swiftly because of your clarity, it is an attention-getting experience for them as well. But if you spend any time trying to explain to them what you're doing that they're not doing, then you're not doing it either. Correct. So... My main question this was actually requested by my mom is being in the vortex, is that a relative feeling for everybody? So when somebody gets satisfaction or just pure joy out of, let's say, weaving a carpet or something or doing something that may not seem, I'm not sure if morally correct might be the right word, if they get satisfaction of, from both of those things, is that a relative feeling? Well, let's give a new definition to morally correct because what most people mean when they're talking about morally correct is you doing it the way I believe you should do it. Sure. Oh, sure. And so anytime that you are feeling elation or joy or those emotions that you know the clarity and pureness and wonderful feeling of them, that means you're in sync with what source is thinking about the same thing. And so we think that it puts a new understanding on what is morality. Societies have historically tried to guide the communities from a stance of true immorality in the sense that they are often not advocating what is best for the individual or even what is best for the whole, but what is best for the one who is dictating the law. In other words, even parents do that. What's good is for you to please me, is what almost everyone who's seeking control of conditions is saying. And those who are seeking control of conditions are frustrated because you can't control conditions, because you can't control the vibrational stance of another. So once you get in sync with who you are, so that you are consistently lined up with that point of view and receiving inspiration and then following through with that inspiration, oh, the satisfaction that comes from that is not describable with words. With that said, so that feeling, if, if everybody feels that, because you can't describe that, that's everybody innately understands that? Well, we think everybody innately understands what feeling good is. But feeling good really is relative. And here's why. If you've lived a contrasting life, so you've launched lots of rockets of desire, 
So source is answering lots of requests. So there's a strong momentum going. And you are non-resistant because you've meditated or because you just woke up or because you've been appreciating. So you are non-resistant to this fast moving energy. Your positive emotion is going to feel really, really strong and good to you. Here's another way of saying it. If you really, really want something and you really, really don't believe it, it's going to feel really, really, really bad. If you sort of want it and you sort of don't believe it, it's going to feel sort of bad. So the faster the energy is moving, which means the more momentum your desire has, then the more it serves you, if you want to feel good, to be in alignment with your own desire. So you can't talk against who you really are. So people have different degrees of desire. There are people who have held themselves back from life so that they're not launching many rockets. So the energy isn't moving that fast so they can be more content and complacent in non-activity. There are those who've launched rockets who must move in the direction of those rockets in order to feel good. And it doesn't have to be the young having all the enthusiasm and the old wanting to sit in the chair in front of the television. It really is about the energy that you've launched or the rockets that you've launched and your relationship to them. Sure. So there's more to your question. There is. It's my sound a little bit dark is just something I've always wondered. You've always said that this is a world of complete inclusion. There's literally nothing that is excluded. Can't push anything away. Yeah. So when you say no to it. You're actually saying yes to it because your attention to it causes you to activate a vibration that calls it. And with that, this has kind of always tripped me up where let's say our murderer, for instance, is under that realm of inclusion. Technically, well, it is under that realm. And your support technically is with everybody. So when somebody commits a murder or, again, something that we may not perceive as being right, is that support technically given with those things because it is a world of inclusion? Yes, because of this. So we've talked about that already here today. So... There is the condition, and then there is the emotion, which we are, for the sake of understanding unconditional love, we are calling the unconditioned. In other words, it's not yet a condition, it's a vibration. It's an emotion. For example, Esther can feel when she has an issue with something to do with business, with something to do with someone painting her house, something that somebody is doing that she doesn't like. So when she wants to talk to us about it, she can feel that we are aware of what she's dealing with and aware of who she's dealing with, but she can feel that we never join her in her anger against that person. She can feel that while we are interested in what she's focused upon and we agree that those kids aren't doing a good job painting the house and we agree that the guy that owns the company should know that they're not doing a good job painting the house and we agree that he should not send kids that don't have experience to paint the house. In other words, we're in total agreement with all of those things but we are not feeling negative emotion toward this person who we love. Whether it's because he's doing a rotten job of painting a house or because he's murdered somebody. And that's hard for humans to hear because you've been putting things in piles of right and wrong and you aren't able to separate conditions from who you are. But you want to. You're not able to separate conditions from who you really are. You're not able to separate what's happening because of the vibration you're offering from the vibration of who you really are. And source is always focused upon the vibration of who you really are. So when we say you can't get it wrong and you never get it done, we mean it. And the reason that you can't get it wrong is because you never get it done. Huh. Maybe hard to hear. Sure. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.